Okay, next we have Helixa Inc. It trades on the OTC pink sheets under the symbol EMOR and is a technology company with assets in both health tech and fintech, which is marrying code and care to create exceptional experiences in health technology. Happy to welcome back Helixa CEO Ian Parker. Welcome, Ian. Thank you. Appreciate you having right, us. Whenever you're ready. Okay, great. So, Helixa, we recently changed the name to um, Helixa. Let me just get this out of the way. Move this down. Okay. We recently changed the name to, to, of the company to Helixa uh, to better represent the, the overall ecosystem that we built, all of the healing technologies that we have, which includes both our health tech and our fintech assets. <clears throat> the the ecosystem is it, this is a, a a good snapshot of how the ecosystem is set up we have the national medical group which covers the united states this allows us to bring on a broad scope of practice in terms of, of overall um, medical professionals we link those medical professionals with patients virtually and that is it that that is also built in with remote patient monitoring so that allows us now to bring on not only bring on a broad range of specialties on the medical side but also support them um, with with the type of technologies that they need to cover the populations that they have <clears throat> and then we have integrated that with a digital pharmacy so not only can we diagnose the patient's issues but we can now also um, provide them their therapies when you know where where they need them when they need them the scope of practice uh, that we're building out is, is going to be one of the broadest that there is out there um, the, the goal here is to make sure that when you come into the ecosystem you don't have to go outside of the ecosystem to find what you're looking for um, it, we do we want to cut down the amount of times we have to refer, refer you out to a third party or, or out into the world to go find that next part of the continuum of care. Uh, the, the, the professionals that we have here that have helped build this ecosystem have experience, uh, previous experience in, in handling close to $900 million in, in telehealth sales, onboarding almost 75 million lives, and have onboarded uh, close to 80,000 physicians into virtual platforms. Uh, so we have we have a an excellent team when it comes to virtual care. This is a great snapshot of how the ecosystem uh, works together. So you have the virtual care application. The virtual care application is going to allow you to schedule consultations, um, see various uh, specialties, and then inside of that application, we have built in. The remote patient monitoring which allows us to use the camera on the phone to take instant vital information from you heart rate breathing rate um, blood pressure oxygen saturation this all happens from the camera on the phone it scans your face it looks past your skin since your skin is translucent it uses the power of that phone to actually look past your skin and see the blood flow in your face and now it's able to report that those vital signs directly back to the cl clinicians. This is, it's very key um, in, in terms of how that fits into our strategy of expanding the ecosystem. In order to support a, a wide variety of specialties, we need to provide them with real-time information. Um, that leads us right into the digital pharmacy. We have partnered with a, one of the, one, one of the uh, major last mile companies, and we're able to deliver the therapies directly to the patients in certain metropolitan areas uh, on the same day. So we can get the, not only can you see the, see the doctor, uh, not only does the doctor have all the vital information that, that he needs to, to, to help him uh, diagnose the problem, him or her, uh, that the, the clinician can now also prescribe the medication and we can get that to you uh, when and where you need it. Um, the, the last piece of this, is is the e-wallet piece um this 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 is a is a key part of the ecosystem that really separates us from everybody else so 
what we've done is we've married the fintech with the health tech. We've taken the e-wallet, which allows us allows us to verify your information, uh, take down certain vital information from you in terms of, of, of your financial condition, and now we can help you search uh, various programs that might be available to you um, in, in terms of governmental and charitable aid, housing, food, healthcare, and meditation, especially, uh, so we can help you get the, the type of, of financial assistance you need in order to uh, maintain the care level that you need within the ecosystem. Once again, we don't want you leaving the ecosystem, we want you to stay in the ecosystem so that we can, we can provide you the value inside, the, inside of our healing environment. The, the key behind the digital pharmacy, and I think this separates us from a lot of the other competitors, when people talk about users, especially um, inside of the digital pharmacy applications, they, they're always talking about patients. That's when they, so when they look at users, they're always talking about patients. When we looked at, at, at defining users, we used a much broader definition because we don't just have patients using the system. We also have physicians using the system. And we also have pharmacists and manufacturers using the system. So when we designed the user interface, we made sure we addressed all of these constituencies to ensure that they're all getting what they need in, in, to, to be able to provide or receive the services that, that, uh, that they desire. As of right now, um, the, the product is completed. It's, it's out there in the world. Um, we've, we've rolled it out. We've um, established our central processing in Texas. So that allows us now to um, to deliver therapies in 38 states. Uh, we can, we're, we're expanding that to all 50 states. We've also onboarded, and you've probably seen this in some of our press releases, but we're onboarding a very seasoned team in terms of pharmacies. They've run uh, close to $200 million annually in pharmacy revenue, and they, they, uh, they've, they've managed close to 350,000 plus prescriptions annually. In terms of our pharmacy pipeline right now, we have um, we have the, the the pharmacy that we recently closed. Um, so that transaction is is done. That launches at the end of this month. We have a pipeline of digital pharmacy um, revenue that we are onboarding as we speak right now. We have some um, major blue chip companies that we've signed transactions with that we'll be discussing in the near future. And we have close to 95 million in, in, in sales that we are, are currently negotiating with um, as we speak. So there's there's a reason to keep your eye on our news feed right now. Uh, there's going to be a lot of activity on that front. Um, and then we have the remote patient monitoring, which really allows us to expand this, this, this revenue that we are acquiring uh, exponentially. In terms of the remote patient monitoring piece. The key here is the amount of data that we are capturing just by virtue of the phone. Um, so you don't need a cuff or some other piece of equipment to capture this information. We're capturing your blood pressure, your breathing rate, your heart rate, cardiac workload, irregular heartbeats, um, even stress index. We're capturing all of that, your pulse, um, all from the camera on the phone. That allows us to expand the scope of practice. So when, when you think about it, it we, we can have the desire of expanding the scope of practice and the types of specialties that we want on the platform. But in order to do that, a lot of those specialties need real-time vital information in order to be supported on the platform. So this not only allows us to expand the scope of practice, but it also allows us to expand the types of, of prescriptions that we can support virtually. In terms of how this helps the system, I think this is a, a good slide to sort of understand how it helps us exponentially expand revenues or revenue opportunities. So by giving these physicians the data that they need, 
we're creating additional reoccurring reimbursements. We're also helping stabilize patient treatment so we can, we can prescribe a, a, a wider range of therapies. So when you think about what that means, where another virtual company is going to stop because they can't support certain prescriptions that need constant follow-up, we can now move past them and, and, and make additional prescriptions or prescribe additional therapies virtually because of the fact that we have real-time information and we can do the follow-ups that they can't do. We have bundled our services and, and uh, formed a relationship with um, a group, uh, a supplemental benefits group. So this health services hub relationship, what this allows us to do is now take all of those services that we've created and bundle them together and place them inside of this 3.2 million 3.2 million lives. That starts on April 1st. Um, once that begins to happen, what it allows us to do is take these 3.2 million lives and start to filter it down to chronic condition patients. The reason we're focused on chronic condition patients is because those are the patients that we can provide the most value to. And by providing more value to those patients, they are obviously more valuable to us. So our focus right now is to take this 3.2 million lives and start to filter it down to those chronic conditional lives. Just to give you an understanding of what that means, a small amount of lives being filtered, you know, filtering down to a small amount of chronic condition lives allows us to turn close to five to six hundred dollars a month in revenue per patient. So even if we only filter down to 30 or 40,000 patients, you can start to do the math on a monthly basis and see how, ex how, how it, it affects revenues exponentially. The system is set up to provide that immediately, and that is, that, that is gonna be the focus as we move into the next quarter. So this is a good example of how we use this in, um, in the field. Because of the flexibility of the platform, um, we had a we've we've had um, recently um, a a challenge from a, a group that had um, an elderly owned elderly um, communities, and one of the one of the challenges that they had was not just that the clientele is somewhat technologically adverse, um, which that's something we can solve. The other problem or other uh, challenge that they had is that there's the, the, the medical community, the clinicians out there, were somewhat adverse to handling or, or uh, supporting that particular population virtually. And the reason for that is that that particular population usually doesn't have one problem. They usually have multiple conditions. They don't necessarily have, you know, they're not taking one medication, they're taking multiple medications. So in order for the medical clinicians to feel comfortable in treating that particular population, we need to provide them additional, um, additional support. We need to provide them additional data in order to feel comfortable supporting that population virtually. And that, again, is where you see the remote patient monitoring, the sophistication of that remote patient monitoring allow us to pull in a broader range of specialties to support that population and and also make it easy for the patient to use. In terms of the the common relief package that we built into the system, the way this works is since we have the e-wallet attached, here's the fintech getting married to the health tech, we can now verify your identity because it's a quasi banking application. We can now verify your identity. Once we verify your identity, we can capture your personal information. Now we can search all the available programs that are out there, uh, either governmentally and certain charitable organizations, even certain uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers. We can determine your eligibility right there on the spot because we have all the information. We're able to verify it instantly and we can submit the application right there. Uh, on the phone. 
And if you qualify, you can receive the payment directly through the e-wallet. So, and that'll go into whatever bank account you specify. So, this cuts the application time down to um, down to one to three days. Typically, it takes six to eight weeks, and that's if you can actually find it. You have to go to multiple sites to actually go out and find this this these programs. Um, they're not always easy to find, and this allows us to help you do that instantly. And when you think about what that means for us from a healthcare perspective and a meditation perspective, uh, it's it's extraordinarily valuable to our customers. And obviously um, we, we, we benefit as well. In terms of the crosswalk of what Elixa has built, and I think this is, this is a great slide to really understand how we analyze the competition and how we built our system to really compete, not just with the pharmacy side, but also with the virtual care um, side of the business. If you look at virtual care, there's we have we have the most complete virtual care package of all of any of these particular companies. There's very few of them that will be seen that have anything in, in way of pharmacy. And likewise, very few of the pharmacy people um, actually move over to virtual care. There's only one really, just true pill, right? And and you know that's that's probably our, our major competitor. So in terms of our complete ecosystem, our complete healing environment, you can see how we've addressed both the pharmacy side and the telemedicine side or the, the virtual care side. Um, and and we, we've, we've built it to make sure that all of these pieces are integrated together so you don't have to go from uh, one platform to another to find what you need. In terms of what we've what we've created in terms of a healing environment, we've taken a look. It, it, it's it's interesting that healthcare has typically been a slow adopter of technology, uh, at least from a digital standpoint. They they they've been resistant to sort of a, the virtual care movement in the past. COVID changed all of that. So what you're seeing now is not necessarily technology catching up to healthcare, but rather healthcare catching up to technology. There's a lot of fragmented pieces. A lot of people have built pieces that solve a problem or, or, an, or a challenge inside of the virtual care um, ecosystem for, for the healthcare uh, professionals out there. But nobody has taken all of those fragmented pieces and put them all together. And that's what we've done is we've taken all of those fragmented pieces and we've created some, some unique um, some unique building blocks within that and we've unified all of those fragmentations into one healing solution um so happy to to take questions at this point in time uh obviously if, if anybody would like to to get in touch with us brett is is uh his email is right here um just just to clarify one last time we just recently changed the name from emerald organics so if you go to our symbol which is emor that is Helixa. Um, they will eventually change the name and reflect that on the ticker symbol. Um, obviously, given the, the COVID, you know, COVID and, and uh, various paperwork uh, takes a little time. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but this is Helixa. All right. Thank you, Ian. We do have a few questions. Um, so how is the rollout of the platform going and what should investors expect in the coming months? Sure. So in terms of the rollout of the platform right now, <clears throat> we've we've taken over our initial um, initial pharmacies. We have our initial pharmacy footprint. We have our last mile agreement in place. Uh, revenues are starting to, to get produced on, you know, within the platform right now. And we expect those to expand pretty rapidly through the next quarter. Um, we also have uh, the, digi the, the remote patient monitoring, which is that, that application is completed. It's, it's a matter of us rolling it out into the populations and that's gonna happen sometime next quarter. So I think what you're gonna see in the coming quarter is an expansion of our revenues into the, in, 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 in the pharmacy space. That's going to be supported um, and, and 
um, will be helped and assisted by, by the rollout of the uh, advanced patient monitoring. And in addition to that, I think you'll start to see us moving um, virtual care uh, visits you know, into the future um, and starting to expand the digital pharmacy reach as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, hash that out a little bit more. That's the next question. Exactly how many revenue verticals do you have and what do you expect the growth rate of each to be? Sure. So I would say that there's there's four major revenue verticals. Um, and the the way I would break it down, there's a lot of there's a lot of different segments within them, but the the four major verticals would be the digital pharmacy. Um, inside digital pharmacy. What we want to do is as we pull in and we digitize these these pharmacies that we are that we are acquiring or that we are partnering with, as we pull in those populations, we want to take those patient populations that are not digitized as of yet, that do have chronic conditions, and move them into remote patient monitoring. So not only am I prescribing medication to them, but now I'm also doing virtual patient monitoring for them as well. So you have the populations that we're assuming from physical locations. Then you have the digital pharmacy piece of that, which is as we bring on additional specialties, we bring on additional virtual care um, specialists and, and clinicians, we can now support the type of therapies that they need to prescribe. And so that's the, the, the second bucket. In terms of the, the, the third bucket would be um, the supplemental benefit piece of it. So if you look at the supplemental benefits, we talked about the 3.2 million lives that we have. So we want to grow that population, bundle that together. And once again, the goal there is not necessarily you're, you're going to make a small amount of money on a per patient per month uh, fee in terms of bundled services, but it allows us to have them as a captive market. So now we can we can filter them into our remote patient monitoring and our digital pharmacy. And the last piece of this is people that are, you know, in need of, of aid, which is a large amount of people at this point in time. So <clears throat> as we boil that down, as we start to start to filter that, filter through that, we can now help them with the types of, of, of therapies and uh, consultations that they need as well. Fantastic. We do have one more question. Um, can you explain how the social program access fits into your ecosystem? Does the administration change help or hurt you? So, so from an administration standpoint, I, I assume we're we're speaking about the um, the, the current U.S. Uh, presidential administration. So, yes, we're we're somewhat politically agnostic there. Um, I don't think that, uh, I, I think what you're seeing right now is that, once again, healthcare has been sort of a slow adopter of these technologies. Now that they've moved into the on-demand economy, they've moved into the, the, the next generation of virtual care, we're not going to be turning back. So I don't think that, uh, I, I don't know that the, the administration is necessarily going to matter in that regard. I think it's going to get supported either way. Um, in terms of the in in terms of the um, the overall ecosystem in, um, for for social relief, um, I think that certainly helps us uh, separate ourselves from everybody else, and it begins to marry those those digital assets that we have, that health tech and that fintech. It helps us marry both of them together uh, to provide a very broad um, a very broad value to uh, the people that come into our care environment. Fantastic. Thank you, Ian. You have a few more minutes if you'd like to make a few closing remarks. The only thing I would add at this point in time is that um, you know, we we are moving very quickly and very rapidly um, on our on our on our execution plan. So if um, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to follow our news our news feeds. We're we're going to release information, you know, as as we as we um, as we execute here. We have some great people that we're onboarding um, to help support that growth, 
and um, we look forward to communicating that to the public as we do it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time and presentation, and we look forward to all of your updates. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, everyone, we're going to take a quick break. But while we do, make sure to take down those links below, all the companies that you're following. Um, those who follow us on Twitter are always the first to know about the presenters at our next conference. So make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, Twitter, and so you know when we post the replays of all these events and conferences. Um, if you would like to see a specific company present on an upcoming emerging growth conference, just email us at emerging at conference at emerginggrowth.com and please include as much details about the company as you can and who we should reach out to. Visit us at emerginggrowth.com slash slash conference and submit all the information there and take a quick break. We'll be right back in about 10-15 minutes.